you can't believe it, folks, or can you? Serbia, one of the powerhouses, reminding us once again they are among the best. Be honest, Serbian fans, did you expect this? No Jokic, no Mitic, no problem. Serbia's last medal was the Eurobasket 2017 silver and now they have a chance to win their first gold in 21 years. Coming into the World Cup with heavy losses, coach Svetislav Pesic and his troops have proved that a basketball cliché saying that defense wins championships is still legit. Or at least, defense can bring you to the final. Let's analyze how Serbians limited Shea Gilders Alexander, why Alexa Avramovic should win the defensive player of the tournament for semi-final alone and why Bogdanovic is still one of the FIBA gods. Game planning against Canada is pretty obvious. How are we stopping Shea is the number one question. Pesic and his coaching staff chose the obvious one. When he's playing one-on-one -on -one and driving, Serbia are going to stun from the strong side. That's basically saying we are going to live with others taking shots. And Dylan Brooks shooting a free wide open is a risk I would take as well. In the next clip, it's Stevan Jovic on S. GA. He does a pretty good job here, but Serbians don't even want him taking a fadeaway. It's RJ Barrett alone and this time Canada score. Now it might seem like a crazy tactic leaving other players wide open, but is it really? Dort and Brooks are not great shooters, while RJ Barrett is an extremely streaky one. In the first half in ISO situations, other players made two frees out of four. But the best part is that Shea did not take a single field goal in these situations. Now in the pick and rolls, the plan was no different. It's Horn's flair and Jovic is at the level of the screen not leaving anywhere until the ball leaves Shea's hands. Smart basketball as I would also take a Linux jumper off the dribble than any shot from SGA. In the next play we see Dobrich denying him from the ball. Canada counter with blind pick play that gets Shea into the paint but look at everyone concentrating on him. He kicks it out then RJ drives in and it's nice offense from Canada. Too bad that there weren't many of those. He gets inside again, passes it out, making the right decision one more time. Brooks drives inside and his kick out gets intercepted. In the second quarter with Milutinov on the bench, Davidovac is high on the pick and roll that leads to Shea finding Powell on a short roll. For the first time in this game, Ball finds its way back to Gilgis Alexander but he can't connect. Serbia get the rebound and feeds Canadians a bit of their own medicine in transition. Uh the smarts from Dobritz. Then Svetislav Pesic plays the ultimate impact substitution card. Alexa Avramovic checks into the game and well, what you're about to see might be the best 5 minute defensive performance by any player in this tourney. First, he almost gets crossed over by Shea only to block his pullback attempt a couple of seconds later. How in the world did he recover here as he also draws an offensive foul for kicking the leg? Look at his emotions too. Later, he is close to a steal but can can't capitalize, yet it creates confusion in Canadians' offense. Lou Dort has been solid in the World Cup shooting the free ball, but we already saw it's a risk Pesic is willing to take. He bricks it and look at Alexa delivering the pass on a silver platter for Jovic. In the next possession, Canada want to attack through the pop of Olenek and a 45 cut to counter the help. But Goodrich is on point with his interception, Avramovic picks it up and weirdly nobody is stopping the man with the ball. You think that's it? Alexa was just starting here to be honest. Aggressive on the ball one more time, he draws an offensive foul, throwing another Canada's possession into the trash. However, Serbians miss and it's RJ Barrett running to fast break. Not for long though, Alexa perfectly times this steal in transition gets fouled and goes to the line for two free throws. Shea's like, okay, this guy's being annoying, I'm bigger and I can just post him up. Think again SGA, the ball is out of your hands quickly. To put a cherry on top of this insane 5 minute performance, Alexa flies for this closeout on Alexander Walker free and forces him to travel. Goes up, travels. With the attention from guess who, Abramovich. Serbia were plus 11 in these 5 minutes played as it was a crucial run that Canadians never bounced back from. Talking about the other side of the court for Serbia, it was the same possessed man that did most of the damage. Bogdanovic opens up his scoring account after Brooks stunts away from him, don't ask me why, and Bogey relocates to the corner to create space. A similar thing happened on this Petrushev post-up. Now I know this is Canada's defensive style, but it cost them 6 important points in the first half. 
For the first time in this tournament, I also saw Canada's team being outmatched in physicality. Look at Bogdan going hard for this offensive rebound and stealing three points out of nowhere. His reaction speaks louder than thousand words on what this game means for Serbia. A bit later, Davidovic rebounds his own miss, Bogey gets fouled on the fake, still shoots it with Walker contesting this perfectly, yet it's the best sound in the world for Serbia fans. Hits a three, what a shooter! To no one's surprise, Canada had the same idea with Bogey as Serbia had with Shea. First of all, deny him from the ball as much as possible. But he cuts back door, forcing SGA to switch on him and it's barbecue chicken alert for Bogey in the post. In the next clip, a handoff brings two defenders near Bogey, he makes the right pass, which leads to Dobrich wide open free. Seconds later, Serbia run the same action one more time. This time Bogey stops earlier knowing they would switch and this gets Alexander Walker out of position. Baseline opens up, Powell helps and there is no one ready to rotate. Also, Serbia exposed a weak link in Canada's elite defense. Pesic put a target on Olenik's back right from the start and since they switched a lot, it was easy to hunt him for mismatch situations. Here, the possession looks lost, but once Goodrich gets Olenik in front, Kelly does not show any resistance whatsoever, stopping Marco to his strong left hand. In the second half, he is on Dobrich and gets caught ball watching while Stevan Jovic drives inside. And these are the mistakes there is no recovering from, it's two points immediately. When Olenek was playing at the center position in the second half, it was even easier to get him involved. Simple ball screen triggers the switch and Goodrich is feeling pretty good about his chances here. On the last possession of the third quarter, Canada pre-switched so they could avoid Olenek on Avramovic on perimeter. But Alexa drives inside and I'm not sure why Kelly decides to help here, leaving Vanya Marinkovic of all people wide open. Marinkovic, he can shoot it as well! Trailing by 13, Canada increased the intensity to start the second half. That has become their trademark throughout the World Cup. Great defensive possessions leading to transition scores for Shea or others. It looked like a promising try to even up the game, but they missed on various looks in the fast break. Here again they deny Bogdanovic from the ball, but Jovic takes matters into his own hands and stops the bleeding with an and one play. At the end of the day, Serbia had too much variety and weapons in every area of the court versus Canada's switch all. Here they go to Militinov in the post where the center has Dort. All the attention is on him, Dobrich times his cut ideally and shows off his touch. Later it's another bogey Militinov pick and roll in the empty corner and Canada miscommunicate. All this mess brings three players close to Nikola, but all of them not as tall and strong as the Serbian big man. Turning, putting it up and it goes! One coming from Milutinov. Jordi Fernandez has seen enough of Milutinov, and this is where a short chess match between coaches take place. Fernandez subs in a 21-year-old Zach Ede, who stands at 2 meters and 24 centimeters, to take care of Milutinov. Pesic immediately responds by putting Petrushev, saying, "Well, let's see how he deals with the pick and pops." Then Ede plays one possession, gets called for a foul, and Fernandez is subbing him out after 12 seconds. I think Pesic won this round, guys. What do you think? However, he gets some points back by instructing his guys to play this ball screen with Shea almost at half court. This got their leader going full speed towards the rim and Militinov and SGA got two layups out of this. As a reminder, you just saw half of his made field goals in the last 20 seconds. Because on other pick and rolls he was forced to give up the ball by the Serbian game plan. And these are all right decisions. Two are on him, two more protect the paint as RJ is wide open. But Canada weren't able to answer the main question we had about them since the beginning as others kept missing shots. And not only that, it's this guy again. I was surprised when he pickpocketed Jokobaitis in the quarterfinals free times, but now I feel better about it. This is an NBA first team member he's stealing from. Amazing. He wasn't about to stop though. Canada tried to apply the same pressure to him, but he wasn't about to be intimidated. Alexa beats Dort to the rim and bravely finishes over Powell as well. I thought the ability to beat Canada's pressure with the dribble was one of the main factors in this semi-final. That's how they limited the other teams, but here Alexa goes again, beating Shea to the left and creating havoc that leads to 
to a score. In the end, it was Bogdanovic's turn to close things out. Watch this beautiful Euro step avoiding the help side defender into the underhand layup. Absolutely brilliant. Up 12, he's feeling it and you can see he wants to get another shot off. Barrett is all over him, the possession looks lost but who cares, when it's the FIBA god Bogdanovic with the ball in the last seconds. Look, oh boy, that is a dagger from Bogdan Bogdanovic! To sum it up, Serbia dominated Canada from start to finish. They led for 37 minutes showing that even without the NBA MVP and one of the best players in Europe, they are capable of reaching the final. Lockdown defense, potent offense, this team have it all. And on Sunday, they're playing Germany for their third ever world title. Can they win it all? Let me know what you think about this game and Serbia's chances in the final. Don't forget to like this video and I'll see you in the next one.